Yes, the title of this video is wretchedly clickbaity, and I'm so sorry about that, but it's absolutely true. I wouldn't try to make a spot welder without this little tidbit of knowledge. So you guys may remember this is my spot welder, which I featured in my last video. Um, it's still going strong, spot welding things. Uh, I haven't really gotten into the cutlery drawers yet, but I'm thinking about it. But it did actually have a failure recently, and I wanted to cover that in this video. So if you're doing a spot welder like this, there are sort of three different ways of doing it. The first way is you can basically just turn the transformer on when you want to be welding and just kind of try to hit the electrodes together fast enough that uh, you make a weld that's not too powerful, I guess. The second way, which is the way I'm doing, uh, you've got some kind of a timer circuit in here or an Arduino or something, and you're pulsing for a certain amount of time. So if you're welding really thin metal together or wires or something, uh, you don't blow the wires up and you don't burn through the metal. The third way, which would be the most sophisticated way, I think, would be if you control the duration of the pulse and also the power of the pulse. You can't do it with the hardware I've got, so I'm just not going to even try. Um, duration seems to work really well, actually, but as you'll see, there's some problems with it. So to sort of accomplish what I'm doing here, which is to pulse electricity for a certain amount of time through a transformer, the most common way to do that is with a relay. So this little gray box is actually called a solid state relay. They're sort of a dime a dozen nowadays on eBay. Um, this one's called SSR 40DA. Uh, the 40 means it can switch 40 amps, which is pretty impressive. A relay is basically a digitally controlled switch. So you put a really small signal in here from like an Arduino or something and magic happens inside and it switches a really big load over here. So what we're trying to do is control the duration of a pulse in an AC circuit. So we're going to start with the 120 volt AC that comes out of my wall and your wall if you're in North America as well. And that's going to go right into our transformer. Oh. The transformer is what is going to step down the voltage to go to the electrodes to be able to pump all that current through the material and melt it together. In order to be able to control the duration of that pulse, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the electricity in the primary winding. And we're going to do that using a relay, which of course is controlled by the Arduino in this case, but could be controlled by like a timer circuit or even a switch if you're just trying to use a lower power switch. In addition to that, we're going to have a safety switch before we get back to the 120 volt AC in the wall. And that's, like I said before, that's just going to be for a safety shutoff. Um, the final component in this circuit is actually going to be a varistor, which is sort of what this video is getting at. But that is basically going to let voltage spikes go through the varistor rather than forcing their way through the SSR. Now a transformer is basically a really big inductor, and an inductor creates a magnetic field and stores energy that way. One thing inductors really don't like doing is stopping suddenly. They store all this magnetic energy, and then when you stop it suddenly, it actually outputs that energy as a huge voltage spike. These weren't really designed for inductive loads, they're kind of designed for resistive loads like uh, heating elements and things. So when you're running something like a motor off of them or a transformer, they're quite susceptible to the inductive voltage spike coming back. So one of the complicating issues is that these solid state relays are frequently zero crossing as opposed to random crossing. And that means when you're looking at the sine wave coming out of the wall in the 120 volts AC in this case, it'll only switch when the 120 volts crosses the zero line. So it switches at zero volts. The problem with that is that at zero, the rate of change of voltage is actually the highest. So it actually makes a worse condition for an inductive energy spike. The reason my title is so clickbaity and why I think it's pretty important to sort of know about this is because when these things fail, they fail in the on position. So if you're welding, you're going to keep welding. Fortunately, I have a switch on mine. So when this thing failed, I was able to switch off the power and I mean, this thing is just a brick now, but um, I didn't melt my electrodes or burn down my house or anything. So fortunately, there is a way that you can mitigate this effect while still using these really cheap solid state relays, which have lots of advantages. Um, and hopefully you don't fry anything. And that is this lollipop looking thing. So this is called a varistor. So a closed relay is kind of like a closed door. It won't allow any current through. But if you get a huge current spike, it'll force its way through and it damages everything in here. A varistor is a resistor that varies with voltage. So if you get a really big voltage spike, it can actually get through. And that's good because what we do is we short the terminals with a varistor. 
And if we get a big voltage spike, it pushes its way through the varistor rather than forcing its way through the relay. I'll throw the part number for this guy up on the screen. I think it's a good choice for 120 volt switching. I'm not sure if it works for 220 volt or not. I really don't know the details about how to pick a proper varistor. It's got to be able to handle the voltage spike, but it's also got a trigger at a low enough voltage spike that it actually protects the relay. So basically you have to pick something in between those two. The other thing to note about varistors is that they actually do have a set lifetime. They're electronic components, I would probably order them in a pack of 10. Um, but they can, only, they can only give way to voltage spikes a certain number of times, which is okay. I believe they fail in the closed state too, which is the same as the relay, so... I mean, it's not safe, but it's not like it's any less safe. And, uh, yeah, so I'm running one of these right now and I haven't had a problem yet. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to do the machining video on this next, probably next weekend. And uh, then we'll move on with new projects. Cheers!